close this door. Close it. Close it. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks everybody for joining us. And as you can tell, we have a pretty packed house in kind of traditional AA style, which to be honest with you, I'm missing these days. Uh, I want to take the opportunity for two reasons uh, to make a short introduction. Today, as well as it is a celebratory time, I think, for our phase two students who have successfully sort of finished their endeavor, or almost anyway, in terms of their time with us. It's also Graduate Open School Day, uh, which is basically prospective students who are coming here actually to see what the course, what the school is actually about. They've seen a lot of programs. There was, and for you that are coming here, we welcome you, obviously. My name is Theo Sparopoulos. For the ones that don't know me, I uh, get the privilege and pleasure to work with the staff here at the DRO. And I think one of the things that's really important about our attempts to explore design as a mode of inquiry is really the nature of the exploration. The ability actually to think that practice matters, design matters, and that there's a value system that's there which is very much a part about why we do what we do. To many people, I think this isn't always clear. I'm sure to many people, when you try to explain what you do to your parents, to your friends, to your girlfriends or boyfriends, there's a challenge, which is one that we are always kind of trying to articulate in manners that not only challenge, actually, the daily discourses of other professions, but I think are very much rooted in a belief system, a statement of purpose, and I think particularly in this school, and I would like to share that particularly with the DRL, is a kind of unapologetic belief that design matters. And I'm going to state that, we believe that, we practice that, and I think in one sense, what the testimony is for many of the students who are working not only with us but in other places, and for sure that extends not only to the AA, but other communities of like-minded people. It means a lot to actually bring people together and actually have the opportunity to not only share ideas and conversation, but actually understand what the nature of the project really is. This isn't about novelty. This isn't about anything in a trivial form. This is a continuing experiment that really is exploring the demands that architecture makes on research, on us, and generally, I think, to the larger design community. We've had the pleasure of actually having, I think, pretty informed conversations with the critics that we invited. And I think for that, we have a good weekend to really think through some of those implications. But in parallel to that, we always invite some of our guest critics to give uh, what we call keynote lectures. It's not the title that I would give. But I think it's really a special uh, contribution from the critic side that not only is actually just talking about what we do, it has nothing to do with that, but larger kind of discursive practices. And I'm very pleased tonight to introduce Flavio particularly to the AA community because I think you will find that there is a community here of people that actually see design not holistically between particular disciplines, but see it in a much larger discursive practice. And I think for that, and um, particularly from the architectural community, to also communicate that to people like Flavio and to other companies and to other people that are actually working within disciplines. I'm not really a guy that believes in distinct disciplinary distinctions. I think anybody who is interested in design actually looks for opportunities to work in different kinds of contexts and different sort of problems and looks at design as a way of really proactively engaging things. I'm very pleased to welcome Flavio. I think everybody's read his bio, head of Ferrari design and all of these other things. I think one aspect that I would like to share, and I think maybe he could express that, is that he was trained as an architect. And like many people, we have our paths that lead us in and out of particular practices. But I think the nature of exploration and design, I think, is part of 
I cannot really translate the Italian. I will let him to be more eloquent about it. But it's something about between passion, purpose, and I could say elegance and motivation about exploring design. Maybe Ferrari is an embody of it. Maybe the student's work is an embody of that. But the pursuit, I think, of what that actually means is something that actually resonates with us. And as a conclusion for the two days' events, I'd like everybody to warmly welcome Flavio to the AA. Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome. And uh, thank you very much, Theo, to be, for even inviting me to this uh, incredible school, and also Patrick, I wanted to ask, uh, say also thank you very much to Andrea, uh, Pier, Pier Andrea, and also to Zaha. And um, well, it's, I, I will try to improvise because honestly, <laughs> in the last uh, weeks uh, there wasn't so much time to to prepare something. But I will I will try to uh, do a very quick uh, journey into our world, into the Ferrari design world. Um, uh, first of all, some, uh, some uh, uh, information about the Ferrari Design uh, Center, which is a totally new uh, reality at Ferrari, which is very strange because um, historically the, the research about design has been done uh, uh, for Ferrari um, from the coach builders like Pini Farina and many others. Uh, this because uh, the mentality of uh, Enzo Ferrari was uh, very peculiar. It, it was very, very uh, um, uh, passionate about uh, races. He, he wanted to win. This was the main reason of, of his life. And there was a moment where, where he decided to produce cars because everybody was asking for, for Ferraris. So why only Ferraris for races? And, uh, and then uh, started uh, um, in, in, in the, the late 50, 50s one, uh, one uh, collaboration with Pininfarina uh, and, and uh, uh, that's why Ferrari didn't have any design center so far. So in uh, 2010 I had the chance to, to be involved on this, uh, this project, not only as uh, head of uh, of the projects, of the design projects, but also the creation of the, the team and the design center. You will see uh, some photos of, uh, of the, let's say, day-by-day -day work and, and life, uh, um, but even if the, the, the main, main focus of the presentation will be the La Ferrari, which is the most important Ferrari of uh, the recent uh, production because it's, the, it's, it's not only a supercar, it's a hypercar. It's the car that normally in Maranello we, we call them uh, uh, speciali, le speciali, so the cars that represent the uh, distillate of, uh, of uh, the technology and the innovation of Ferrari coming from the Formula One and the races. But I, would like, I, I want to start with this. This is the 12 Berlinetta. Uh, I have a special, uh, uh, can I can say, um, uh, special link to this car because uh, this has been the first project uh, completely developed in-house, in, even if there was a kind of uh, collaboration with uh, Pininfarina, but, but this, is, this has been the first uh, um, project, the first exercise done, done in-house with, with a team that was uh, still, I mean, very, very small. And, This car is, uh, is a typical GT Ferrari with a 12-cylinder front engine. Um, and uh, one second, and this, this car is a typical, a typical GT, a Gran Turismo. Th that means, and I need, sorry, I need to come back, sorry, one second. That means front engine, uh, a quite elegant <coughs> shape because of the classical proportions. No, so normally a lo very long bonnet and uh, a very short cabin pulled uh, to the back, towards the back. 
and, uh, and it was quite difficult to uh, interpret this car in, in a very modern way. So we, we, the, the idea was how to uh, make something really new and innovative, even though the, 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 the elegance and the body was, uh, was quite classical. That's why we, we, this, we worked a lot with the, the uh, aerodynamics engine, aerodynamic engineers in order to find uh, innovations on many areas of the car. This car is, uh, has, has, has been awarded with uh, many, many prizes, many, many prizes about, about the design. And this is a chart, this is a sketch that, let's say, collects the main ideas, the main themes uh, um, of the car. So let me, let me, so for instance, the, 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 the problem was how to, how to uh, treat the body, the shape of this car, uh, not being too classical. The, together with the help of, uh, of the engineers, we decided to, uh, let's say, to excavate the bonnet in order to create two, two channels. And uh, this is really a new, uh, uh, a new solution never used before uh, the, the, w that we called AeroBridge. And uh, the, the uh, improvement of the aerodynamics done by these uh, devices is very high. So th I would explain this because uh, the, um, every time we design a new Ferrari, it's extremely difficult to understand how the car should be. <coughs> First of all, because the, the, uh, the principles of our bosses, especially Mr. Montezemolo, are very strict. So a new Ferrari should be new, original. The, the, we, we don't want any kind of deja vu. So the problem is how to, uh, in, to make something really new still being absolutely authentic, uh, absolutely Ferrari. And the, the, normally the, the, the solution of, of that is to have a perfect link between the form and the, sh and the, and the functionality. So the only possibility is to work together with, uh, with the experts, the engineers, the aerodynamic engineers, in order to find always innovations and, and new, new ideas. So this is what I was, uh, was explaining before. So um, another interesting aspect in Ferrari is that is totally, I mean, is really as peculiar, is the possibility to, um, to modify the architecture of the car during the process. So as designer, we can have a lot of weight, decisional weight, uh, if we, for example, see that the proportions are not coming well. We, we cannot imagine a new uh, Ferrari without a perfect equilibrium, a perfect balance. So the balance is one of the key aspects when we, we, we uh, let's say, configurate the, the proportions of the car. Second aspect is how to get a very a special sculpture. And uh, this is a photo that uh, I like to, to show because uh, at the time of the presentation of the 12, in 2012, uh, this was the team. So we, I had the chance to start from four people in uh, January 2010. This was the team at the time, and uh, somebody said it's, it's incredible to see the car because it seems part of the team. It's, it seems uh, <laughs> like, a, like, a, like an, another, uh, uh, everything looks like one body. Okay, actually the feeling of, uh, um, uh, uh, of being part of a uh, of, uh, myth, of a uh, legend, is uh, su such a, a, a strong uh, uh, push for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for everybody. Before starting with the, with the LaFerrari, uh, just some photos of the latest eight-cylinder presented uh, at Frankfurt uh, this year, last year, sorry. This is the most exceptional uh, uh, eight-cylinder uh, ever done. It's the most performing eight-cylinder ever produced by Ferrari. And that, oh, 
naturally is the, the best in the world. Uh, <laughs> of course. In, in my, no, really, there are no eight cylinders in the market with the same, the same um, uh, performances. Thanks to many uh, innovations regarding aerodynamics and regarding, above all, this uh, new, um, uh, it's called uh, SSC, so Side Slip Angle Control, that is a new uh, uh, electronic uh, device that permits in, in a curve to maximize the, 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 the grip even in an exceptional situation in a very, at, at very high speed because there is a, a control of the angle so there are many parameters that the car can control in order to maximize the, the, the performance. <coughs> okay, then we start with the LaFerrari. Uh, La Ferrari, as I said before, is, uh, is a more than a supercar, it's an hypercar. Uh, it's the first hybrid Ferrari uh, produced, uh, mm, realized. Uh, the decision uh, has been, I think, quite clever because uh, how to make a new, uh, a new uh, uh, to, to start a new approach to, to the Ferrari technology. Uh, we cannot imagine a Ferrari without a thermic engine. So the only way is to combine the two. So el electrical, electrical engine and, and, uh, and, uh, and thermical engine. Some of the um, scenes uh, of the work done day by day on this car, just to explain how how many people are involved on the project? Uh, I cannot say how many. In the design center, probably more than 40 people uh, over the uh, two and a half years of development. So you can, uh, you can understand the complexity of it. Um, it's uh, absolutely important mm, to have uh, a perfect syntony. I don't know how to say syntony. Tuning, tuning between, uh, between uh, the, the members of the team. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's difficult to make uh, uh, um, a very organic and, uh, and a synergic, a synergic work. One, one, uh, one, uh, one factor that I'm, uh, I'm very pride about, uh, proud about is that uh, the guys, when they start in the morning, they embrace them themselves. It's something that I've never seen in my life. So this, they, they are really friends, and they, they, they share this incredible passion. Um, I'm very happy about this because uh, when, when, I, when I started, I was scared about the possible uh, implications uh, after, I mean, a so quick creation of a team. It's, this never happens. There is no one uh, um, car, car maker in the world with the same situation. So every, every car maker has got one in-house design center. Uh, unfortunately, despite the difficulties, this, this, uh, this works very well now. This chart explains, uh, I mean, uh, is a scheme of, uh, of the time let's say, uh, of the process of the LaFerrari. Uh, when, uh, when we started in 2010, we produced really many, many, many quarter scale models and many uh, the virtual models because um, the, uh, it was necessary to have a, a very, a very uh, wide uh, collection of proposals, and then there was a, a second. The, there was a, a very important presentation with, with uh, five one to scale, one to one scale models, three done in house and two by Pininfarina. The, that presentation in front of the board. The board is uh, done. Is, mm, uh, the boards are three people: so uh, Mr. Montezemolo, the president; Mr. Felisa, the CEO; and Mr. Piero Ferrari, that is the son of uh, uh, of Enzo, the, who is uh, the, the vice president. They decided. They they chose two themes, two concepts. Uh, after uh, some other loops of time, we, we, we arrived to, um, I mean, one 
uh, output, let's say, combining the best ideas, the best themes, and then uh, starting uh, not, not a dream but a, a nightmare, I would say, because that was uh, really uh, very, very difficult, very difficult, to, above all, to, uh, uh, to get a very beautiful shape, very beautiful form, despite the, main, the thousand of constraints that uh, at a certain time uh, really created many problems. And uh, I had to say uh, at, at a certain point, please now give us, Mr. Mr. Uh, Zemolo give us one and one, five, five weeks because we need to sort out everything to come back to, to the original, uh, uh, let's say, intention, otherwise, this is normally, just to let you know how we work, because probably it's, it's not so, uh, so known uh, what happens in, in, inside a design center. This is what we call a package. So this is the first uh, configuration of the mechanical uh, uh, components of the car. And, uh, and, and you can see that the proportions of the car are already there. The second image shows how the one Ferrari like this is fully packed. If there is no space for <coughs> one uh, mouse inside, I tell you, be, be, between the skin and the, and, the, and, the, and the inner components, there is no, no space. Um, and this is the core of a Ferrari, of course, the engine. Uh, it seems more small, but this is almost two meters long. <laughs> so it's a combination of, uh, as I said before, uh, um, thermical engine, the, the gear shift, and the, and the curse. The curse is the electric engine uh, uh, that uses the uh, energy uh, produced by, by the brakes, for instance, and transform them into an overboost. So it's, it's not an, a typical electric car. It's an electric engine that provides an overboost when needed, as in the Formula One. This is another very strong innovation, the, bat the battery of the LaFerrari that is the equivalent of 40 uh, normal batteries. This component is totally uh, built in-house in the Formula One department, as many, mo mo most of the parts of the LaFerrari are built in-house. And this is the first uh, visual model done by the pre, sorry, by the pre-engineering department. Uh, the name of it is involucro. Involucro means uh, in envelope, envelope. But we 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 <laughs> call it uh, um, uh, incubo. That means uh, nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, for instance, this is a. a really efficient shape. There is no problem. This car could have been like this. It, this works very well because it uh, uh, includes all the constraints and, the, and, the, and the, the components and is absolutely perfect in terms of aerodynamics. That's why it's so important the, the work of the designers, but it's also very important the uh, awareness of the designers about what, what, how is the physiognomy, not the, not the physiognomy, the technical, the technical, all the technical aspects of the, the project. If you don't metabolize every single element, every single aspect of the, of the, of the technique of the car, it's really difficult to interpret it in, in, a, in a correct way. So this is a model that represents all the uh, air flows. This is not a car that is normally is uh, simply excavated in, in, in uh, my, by, let's say, uh, treated by subtraction uh, starting from a full volume. It's, uh, it's uh, based on the, on the principle that there is a very, really intimate relationship between the, the, the form and the air flows coming across the, the, the form. This was one of the first sketches. You, you can see, of course, the, the, the inspirations com, com, coming from Formula One. So one, uh, what we call speed form, which is 
an aerodynamic uh, form suspended, floating uh, on, uh, on the basement. The basement is, uh, is the, the flat floor, in uh, aerodynamic floor in uh, carbon fiber and Kevlar too. And this is the first, let's say, uh, idea about how it can evolve into a two-seater road car. <coughs> Uh, as you can see here, the, the, the car is starting uh, to, take, to take shape, to take form, um, and it's uh, quite clear where the, the um, this, uh, channels, let's say, necessary, necessary for, the, for the aerodynamics. And this, is, uh, this represents the theme that has been uh, chosen uh, among, I, I tell you, among uh, I don't know, 30 different teams. Uh, why? Because uh, the, the, the main idea was uh, to have uh, this kind, this cell, this capsule floating with uh, two wings um, inspired by maybe the aerospatial uh, field bent like this uh, in order to cover the, the side radiators in a very, uh, let's say, elegant way. So the idea was to, uh, to hide the holes, to, to hide, to, to reduce the holes, because the holes are too loud for a Ferrari. So even on, on a, a very extreme and uh, uh, impressive car like this, we, we have to maintain a certain level of uh, elegance. Otherwise, it's not a Ferrari. So also, this is uh, quite difficult. When, when I spoke about uh, the title, is, uh, is emo l'emozione la regola, the emotion, the passion, but at the same time the rule. It's not easy to translate it literally. The rules means the, the complexity and, and the, uh, the rules that are not written, but you have to learn step by step, understanding the deep uh, meaning of what is a Ferrari. Um, so this is what now you see one rendering where the, the principle has been applied. You can also see how this construction, this delta uh, shape, uh, becomes a kind of nose, which is, uh, I mean, which reminds slightly the, the uh, nose of a Formula One. And also this idea that seems uh, maybe um, Mm, wanted instead is uh, comes from a, from a clear input of the engineers, the aerodynamic engineers, because we discovered that a step here could improve the aerodynamics. It could uh, head uh, downforce on the rear. Consider that uh, we uh, this is a car that uh, <laughs> talking about uh, performances uh, um, run arrives from zero to 100 kilometers in less than three seconds, from zero to 200 in less, in, in less than seven seconds, and to, from zero to 300 in 15 seconds. And the top speed is about run, almost 400 kilometers per hour. So can, 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 you, can, you, can you imagine the, the importance of the the aerodynamic, all the, all, every angle of the car has been uh, studied in order to keep the car, um, <laughs> attached, to the huh? the attached to the ground, <laughs> and, uh, and every, every uh, uh, I mean, the cluster of these uh, uh, devices and, and uh, configurations uh, uh, provide 600 kilos of uh, downforce dynamic, dynamic da downforce. This is also interesting because the idea, um, so how to treat a car like this? It's a, it's a very um, extraordinary car. Um, it, as I told you, as, um, Ferrari does this kind of cars every 10 years, more or less. They started with a GTO. And then uh, there was the four, uh, F40, and then the F50, and recently, recently, I mean, 10 years ago, the Enzo, and this is the new one. So the idea was, uh, of course, to 
start from the Formula One, also in the body language, the formula language, for, in, for instance, the, the formal language, for instance, this kind of soft feeling around the ducts, the, the side ducts, <laughs> is inspired by this, but it's not obvious. And we, if I explain it, maybe it becomes uh, uh, clear, but we wanted uh, something not obvious. Okay. This is uh, an anti it's just a um, quick collection of uh, different stages of the development of the site. Just to explain how even, even uh, the, the, the theme of the site was chosen, there were so many uh, loops of time to understand how to uh, improve it, how to make it perfect, how to permit, for example, the, the flows uh, um, scavalcare, no, come si dice scavalcare, scavalcare, surrounding the front fender, all the, cr the, the flows coming from, from underneath or from this area uh, should work in, a, in, in the best way. For instance, it was also the thermic aspect is, is important. If we don't reach uh, the minimum, a certain pressure on the red radiators, which are distributed in many parts of the car, the car doesn't work. So, uh, also, this is also interesting because uh, the, the, the idea comes, comes from, from the turning veins, typical turning veins of the Formula One, and, uh, and looks integrated and very dynamic on the side. Uh, after many loops, we, we had to uh, renounce to, the, to it because um, it, it, it worked very well because uh, the idea was uh, to have a kind of wall in order to uh, um, direct the airflow in the proper way. But the problem was the weight. So the, the weight of the door was unacceptable and the balance of the, the weight in, in total was unacceptable. Consider that the, the, um, the presence of the electric engine is, is a, a big problem. We had to uh, make this car light as the Enzo, even having um, an electric engine. So we had to save, uh, uh, let's say, weight everywhere. And this is the final, uh, the final model, the final uh, aspect of the car. As you can see, the idea was also to keep the cabin, the capsule, uh, visible, so uncovered. The, cap, the, 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 um, the cell is, uh, is a combination of glass and, uh, and, uh, ca and, and carbofiber Kevlar, uh, totally built in-house. Uh, Kraftman, come si chiama? Ma mano, come si dice a mano? Crafted. Crafted, crafted completely because there is no way to produce um, um, a cockpit like this which, uh, which uh, weigh, weigh only uh, uh, 70 kilos, 70 kilos uh, in, in an industrial way. So you have to do manually, do it manually. <coughs> This, under, this chart shows uh, some examples of the, the front. The front has been one of the most uh, difficult aspects because the intention was to have a very original front, uh, dictated by the, uh, let's say, the layout of the elements and the necessities, the technical needs. At the same time, we didn't want any, any um, let's say, uh, classical feeling, so no um, typical mouth, Ferrari mouth, but something new. And also, my uh, intention was to have something really uh, modern and, and futuristic. Also because I'm really tired about the, the last 20 years of retro design and nostalgic approach. Fortunately, what I've seen today is totally is the opposite. So everybody's looking at the future. Maybe we're, if, we are, if we are lucky, we are coming out from this uh, horrible uh, period, which is a manieristic period, 
I don't know how much did, did it affect the, the, the architecture, but in the CAD design, it has been a disaster. When, when I started this job that I dreamed when I was a boy, it was a disaster for me. So everybody was thinking of the past. Uh, uh, everybody, there, there are a lot of people that comes to me asking, why don't you make a new GTO, a new um, uh, Testarossa, for instance, or a, a version, a modern version of the Testarossa? I said, but why? Why? <laughs> All my, my master, my Italian, uh, uh, the best Italian designer, Castiglioni, Zanuso, Munari, everybody, would not never thought about that, about mm, quote, mm, uh, quotating, I would say citare, citare, qu quoting, yeah, quoting, quoting, quoting something of the past. The, the, the idea for them was to create something never existed before. So this is what we have to recover in my opinion. Then the problem was how to make it completely new, completely original, without uh, losing the, 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 the identity of the, the brand. And it, it's, it's not so, so easy to, ex to explain it. This is, there are some sketches also, because I want to show you <laughs> that um, we never uh, um, stop sketching. I've never seen uh, uh, sketches in your presentations. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm a little bit uh, worried. My, somebody told me that uh, normally, normally you sketch a lot. The, the guys, but I think this is this is always even if we have the the best the best uh, programs to to make virtual uh, models uh, in a very quick time. In a very quick, uh, we we never forget this, and this is the first the first way to transfer uh, an idea in real time to, to, to a, sheet, a sheet of paper and to the others, because when we, we stay around the model, we do it every, every moment. By the way, this is one of the sketches, uh, the renderings of my, my guys. So just to, uh, I'm, I'm very proud about uh, the team. They are really young, talented designers, uh, designers coming from all over the world. There are. M m I think 25 countries represented in, in the team. Um, then, uh, talking about uh, uh, interpretation, how to get the identity, I was saying, to get the, 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 the Ferrari identity <laughs> even being original. Uh, th there is, this is an interesting comparison. This was the uh, F156 uh, shark nose the very famous uh, Formula One that won uh, uh, in the 61. And uh, apparently there is no relationship. And uh, I, I think that also uh, an ex expert of the history of, of the brand cannot imagine that, that there is a link. But if I show you uh, this, probably you understand what, uh, what we, we meant. Uh, for instance, you can see that there is, uh, in this case there was one, a singular radiator, but two holes. A little bit strange, because normally in, at, in Ferrari there is a strong link between uh, form and function. So the form, form, form follows function. Uh, but this uh, separation in the middle was uh, so iconic and so uh, expressive that we, we wanted to maintain it. Because also we, there was a need for the first time, there is a wing in the front, a wing which is uh, floating uh, on top of the uh, splitter. The splitter normally is, uh, is part of the flat floor. And uh, this contributes to the uh, downforce necessary to keep the, the car on, on the road in the front and to balance the <laughs> rear as well. But we, we, I wanted a very iconic shape. So first of all, something never mm, seen before, like this, that you can easily remember. You, you, and also the V-shape. The V-shape is uh, another characteristic of, of this car. You can find a V-shape also on, a, for instance, the famous GTO bread van, which is not really a beauty, but it's interesting because of the, <laughs> the, the back. And also you can see the, the feeling of, uh, I mean, the, this protruding, a prominent uh, position of the center pillar. 
And this is the, the front, the final uh, aspect of the front. Uh, it's uh, very interesting when you see the car with the, the door open. Um, si dice le porte a farfalla, non è in inglese. Butterfly. butterfly doors, let's say, butterfly doors with two inches, like this. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful because uh, you, you can see the, um, uh, the, the, the construction of it, which is dictated by the aerodynamics. But I tell you, there is no one millimeter of the shape or the form or the surface of this car that has been uh, redesigned less than 200, 300 times. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, talking about the rear, the, in the rear, um, the, again, the problem, the, the, the important aspect was to, first of all, to metabolize, to understand exactly the needs. Um, normally, uh, uh, at Ferrari, there is um, a refusal, the refusal, the refusal, the refusal of uh, add-on devices, because they are uh, not elegant, they are show off, let's say. No? So we, we, the problem is how to uh, improve the, the, the performance of the car, even keeping the form very simple and elegant. That's why we decided to have two layers here. There are two um, spoilers. One is integrated into the sh sh shape underneath and come out, comes out when needed. And also two flaps in the low, uh, lower uh, diffuser that moves together, is synchronized with the, with the spoiler. So you can see that the principle is the same on the front. It's a kind of catamaran uh, sitting on the, on the wheels uh, with a center pillar, in this case necessary to, to cover the uh, electric engine, there is a crash box behind this. Very important because if you crash, the, the electric engine is a disaster. Uh, the rest is a porous area necessary to um, exhaust the, 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 the heat and, uh, and in the very large diffuser at the, on, the, on the lower. Uh, as you can see, the, the lower part is black, it's in carbon fiber, and there is a kind of a similarity with the Formula One, with, where the, the red body is, is, uh, is uh, separated by the, the, the lower part. And, and this is an animation that shows how the uh, spoiler works, and it comes out by, I don't know, I think 30 centimeter. But uh, depending on the speed and, and, and depending on the uh, situations, so the, the electronics uh, can uh, control it and, uh, and also the, the extension of it. But this is very important because for the first time, uh, this is, by the way, one of the tools that we, we use every day. So this, this is the CFD uh, simulation, so the computa computational fluid uh, dynamics, and uh, we don't we don't need to go away from the uh, wind tunnel. We 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 need it's it's enough to. This is our first step uh, to understand if the form works, uh, and uh, and it's also quite uh, precise, quite quite efficient. Um, so it's the first time that. Uh, W that we, uh, we use one uh, spoiler uh, or devices that are controlled by the electronics and they work, they work, uh, they uh, comes out in real time. For instance, when you are f facing one uh, difficult curve, they, 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 the, the control uh, can, uh, can uh, extract the, the, the spoiler in real time very quickly. This is interesting because the, the, it shows how we work with clay. This is a clay model. I don't know if you use clay. Uh, probably yes on, uh, on uh, architecture or not. Never, never. <laughs> but um, 
when when I started, I, I thought that this was the perfect method for Ferrari because it's very easy to to model. It's very easy to build, and uh, and also it's necessary to have the the final touch of. Uh, Masters, they, they are really artists, they are sculptures coming from England, France, uh, and so on. And uh, this human touch is necessary to get the sexy feeling of the shape, otherwise, there's, it's not a Ferrari. So. <laughs> <laughs> mm. By the way, it, if you compare this car to the mm, uh, predecessor, that is the Enzo, the Enzo was very geometrical. So, in my, so uh, and then I decided to avoid any, any Euclidean, Euclidean uh, geometry and to use um, um, the Riemann geometry. Because in this car, there are many areas where the inner parts and the ex external parts are really, really combined, so there are a kind of Mavius uh, situations. Um, and, uh, and this also was a very uh, inspiring idea. This is an example of how we work. So this is a, a moment of the where, where the mini machine is, uh, is working on a, on a fender. Normally we start, we, we combine a virtual uh, modeling and physical modeling, so there are many, many loops. So, so normally we, we, we mill a, a very, very quick uh, virtual model and then we improve it manually. Uh, we scan it with a special uh, gun that is uh, fantastic because in, uh, in immediately you have uh, the, 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 the the digital version of it. So sometimes we, we modify half of the front, and uh, overnight we, 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 seem, so we balance it. And this is the construction of the final model, hard, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, openable doors. And just, I mean, quick, uh, a quick uh, um, journey about the, the interior. The interior it's not really an interior. It's part of the. It's, it's difficult to say where. <laughs> where is the interior? Where is the exterior? Uh, this is the main idea. Generating the form of the the cockpit, which is uh, an ergonomical shape. Is that a uh, collier? Come si dice? That welcome, welcome, <coughs> the pilot and the passenger, and uh, it, it doesn't need a seat. This was very important to avoid the seat because the, the case of the seat is very, very uh, heavy. So the only way was, uh, was to do that with uh, paintings, with paintings directly applied to the, to the uh, cockpit. Here you can see uh, the uh, layout of the uh, ergonomical layout of the uh, uh, controls. Um, I don't know how many times this changed, because uh, for, as you can see, we worked a lot with uh, with the drivers, with the pilots, with uh, Alonso, and so on. Um, but not always the position that you you can you can you find uh, uh, in in a static in a static way works when you drive the car. So there are. Many, many changes after the tests on the, on the truck. Some studies about the, the steering wheel. And here you can see uh, how we started the seat. The, this is one of the sketches, but I, I tell you that, that I promise you there are thousands of sketches. Where, uh, for instance, this is, this is inspired by the Le Tuta, come si dice, they. they the motorcyclist, ah. la tuta, uh, the motorcyclist, uh, racing seat. Yeah, because in India this is not a seat anymore. This is like a glove, glove, a glove uh, that surrounds your body. Uh, so it, it's very important to understand which are the uh, pressures in uh, every part of the body. That's why we wanted to have. Uh, uh, specific treatment, specific materials for e for each uh, each part. First, 
research of, uh, I mean, 2D, 2D proposals, where you can see that in a very simple interior, because it's a lightweight interior, the importance of the seat is, is very high. So in the balance of the interior, the seat gets a, a, a very, a very strong, uh, can, can get a very strong impact. Um, this is uh, one of the digital models done, where you can see that in the, in the grooves created by the, the different <coughs> Uh, patches, the different, the different uh, paddings, there are channels um, treated in order to, um, yeah, to reduce the sweat and in a very natural way, just using the Venturi principle. Also this we had to renounce to it because of weight. <laughs> and this is the team, uh, our, the team that works on the car. Uh, you can see that grow up <laughs> a lot. <then. laughs> um, okay, guys, this is my my presentation. I have one. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I have one. Uh, one uh, very very small, very very short movie that shows the car in uh, in real Thank you so much. You are very kind. Okay, uh, Flavio has kindly accepted to answer some questions. Before all the hands go up, I need to get a couple of roaming mics, which are probably stuck behind a lot of people. Hi. 
Um, so I guess one of the one of the key things for a supercar is also his uh, its sound, right? That it produces. Also, while I was watching the uh, the short clip, it kind of produced already an uh, adrenaline in me. Uh, I can imagine what would be like if I was driving it. Yeah. So, uh, but but by introducing an electric uh, motor, which we all know is silent, how do you compensate that, or is it uh, is it silent? Does it produce the same kind of sound? Well, well I forgot the, the characteristics of, uh, of the engine. There is a thermic engine of uh, 800 horsepower, the, and uh, and additionally uh, there are one. Uh, Thousand six one 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 hundred six sixty uh, horsepower um, provides by the electric engine. So in total, almost thousand one thousand horsepower. So there is no problem about the the the, the noise, the, the 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 sound. Sorry, the sound the sound. And uh, and uh, you have to know also that uh, at Ferrari there is a, a strong culture about the sound. There is a team. Dedicated of experts of sound experts dedicated to this, and uh, we 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 modify even we can also modify the the uh, exhaust uh, architecture if we or, or some other aspects if we need uh, to improve the sound. Um, as I was saying before, uh, um, the famous director. Um, Remember me the name, the director. Can't no. Not sure exactly what it's called. No, no. Von Karajan, sorry, Von Karajan. There was uh, one uh, collector of Ferrari said that the, the, the sound of a Ferrari is, is better than uh, the sound of an orchestra. <laughs> so <laughs> so you, there is a lot of attention on it. Thank you. Um, uh, while you were uh, presenting the the design aspect, you were always talking about the identity of uh, the Ferrari. So, what, as one of the challenges, so what do you think? Like, how how many years it takes to to challenge the identity, and how many years would it take for you guys to think you need a new identity before it starts repeating itself? Um, well. Uh, I, I try to, to create a document of uh, design criteria at Ferrari, but uh, it, it doesn't work like on the other brands. The other brands need that. Uh, I don't know why, honestly, because in the end they produced many, many clones, many, many, uh, let's say, uh, derivatives of uh, all the... the um, and this is, I think this is not, not a good, good thing in, in, in our... In the, in the, car industry. So um, there are some principles that uh, should be very clear, but then you have to create every time something new. Uh, problem is uh, how to keep it uh, authentic. Um, at Ferrari, it's not necessary to have uh, the re repetition of uh, stylems, uh, or typical stylems. This is not... Uh, um, as, as I said before, the, the um, uh, déjà vu is refused normally. So the, the only key element is the innovation. The innovation is uh, is, the, is the important key to 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 make something new, still being really uh, Ferrari. Then we are, we can enter in details, but there are also um, aspects regarding the treatment of the surface. So the certain accelerations, a certain, a certain softness on, uh, on, uh, on. Uh, so it's a combination of uh, uh, full surfaces and also intersection. So we cannot imagine a Ferrari with uh, wanted treatments because uh, it, it becomes uh, uh, fake. Uh, not, uh, not. Uh, every every single aspect of the shape must be linked to the function. So this is the the main principle. Then, I don't know if, it, if I... Yeah, I just like, um, I was just thinking like, is the, when you say this is a Ferrari, like usually people think of the form. So, uh, and you, you like clearly um, uh, pointed out that the function always, the form always 
always follows function. So what, what I what I mean is like, do you guys think there would you would reach a point where the redness, the those those formal aspects of a Ferrari, you would actually give it up for the fun for the form, completely 100% follows the function. So that's. Completely, 100%. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so this is the Ferrari. This is I wanted. So so this is the Ferrari that fu function always, 100% form 100% follows the function. Yeah, of course. But, and, and then now we 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 have to be a little bit flexible because also when uh, when a, if if you think about a, an airplane, an aircraft, also there there is a, a kind of. Uh, uh, intentional approach to the shape is not everything based on uh, necessities. Uh, if we if we want to be um, sweet, so uh, there is a certain uh, um, room for the interpretation. So it's not necessary that uh, there is no one only one interpretation of for uh, for a uh, for a complex project like this. There can be many many. Um, it's uh, then it's a matter of uh, sensitivity. How uh, we have, uh, I have to follow my instinct and to understand what is Ferrari, what in, instead what must be um, eliminated because uh, doesn't doesn't match the the historical DNA of the brand. Okay, thank you. Thank you very Incredible much. Incredible love. Hi. Uh, um, am I on? Yeah, yeah. It's hi. Sorry, I'm behind the column. Um, my question is about uh, the way you uh, so strongly support progress. So, if we look at F50 through Enzo through La Ferrari and the progression, you have gone from derivative, uh, in some way quite essential Formula One technology adapted to two seats, monocoque and internal combustion, through to more advanced uh, integrated structure and engine in Enzo. And now you have. Uh, uh, state-of-the-art hybrid. Where do you see Ferrari, this part of the range of Ferrari going in one generation and two generations? Do you have some preference for direction for energy system or uh, fuel cells, electric, uh, internal combustion? Where do you see it going in one and two generations time? Uh, we think that uh, the hybrid is the direction for Ferrari. I cannot imagine a Ferrari electric, of course. It's, uh, it's, uh, but, but also because I don't believe that this is the, the, the only solution. Uh, the, the electric is, uh, is a, okay, it's a kind of solution, but sometimes, uh, I mean, we have also to think that we are moving the problem from one uh, uh, side to the other. So how, how, how do we produce the energy for, for, the, for electric cars? So. Uh, <laughs> The electric car doesn't produce pollution, but uh, the the centrali, come si chiamano, the centrali, the centrali. Yeah, they, they, of course they produce uh, CO2, uh, and th th this is this is a problem. That do, do we want more uh, nuclear stations or not? I don't know. This is the, this is the. So you see, you see it becoming more advanced hybrid. Yes. More yes. 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 Yeah, but. Uh, Perhaps, perhaps. How, how do you Thank you. The acoustics of an electric engine? <laughs> N I mean, not renouncing to the to the to the therm therm thermal engine. You lose completely the acoustics of an electric engine. Yeah, that's why we don't we don't want to go to this field. <laughs> Since I have the mic, I'm, I'm curious, I guess, from your perspective, because you're coming from an architectural background, and because I know that there are probably many different kinds of disciplines in, in the audience, but I'm curious in terms of also <coughs> your feelings about some of the production relative to, not particularly to architecture, but your background trained as an architect within the problems of design, particularly with this kind of way of describing form and function, which has always been a mantra of a very, very particular type of architecture. And within architecture, when someone says, form follows function, 
we get uh, somehow a discursive uh, rain check for whatever atrocities could have been made and have been made. And I mention that because I think you, you're touching on the complexities of some of the issues, and particularly also with the energy aspects and all of these things. I'm curious, I guess, for some of the students who are maybe in the audience, your personal path towards vehicles and mobility and those aspects coming from the, pers the perception and the sort of studying of space it's a different kind of construct, but I think in some way you've found a way and you use the word synergy, which I thought was also a very important way. If you could maybe give a couple of words to your own personal route towards that through a kind of architectural background, it could be interesting, I think, for some. Yeah, maybe one, uh, one, one aspect that is uh, quite peculiar of my, of my approach is that uh, I strongly believe, believe into the uh, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary approach. So I don't think that uh, to, uh, nowadays we can approach a project like this having in mind only cars. This is uh, completely wrong. Uh, um, so uh, it's what, uh, what uh, I mean, the, the principle of the serendipity is something that we have always in mind. We, we always try to be, let's say, uh, inspired and contaminated from other fields. And, uh, and the idea is to, to get an intuition from, uh, from one field and to, and to translate into another intuition in, in, in our field. So what I've seen today, for, me, for instance, is uh, we'll, we'll produce something in, uh, in the next project, for sure. For sure, My, I think this uh, is the um, key of our time also uh, to to um, to approach everything in a very I mean in 360 degrees perspective. I, I wanted to to say one thing. For instance, I I. Uh, when I was a, as a boy, uh, I, I was always sketching cars, but I was also very eclectic. I, I, I loved architecture, art, uh, sculpture, and so on. And then, uh, even if I wanted to be a car designer, I don't know why. Don't, don't ask me why, because uh, I, I born like this. I born like this. Uh, but I wanted to uh, study architecture, not car design. And, and this is, uh, f for me, this is a, um, uh, a fortune because uh, I can, I can uh, approach the, the projects in, in, a, in a very different way. First of all, I, um, I absolutely adore the presentation and it was extremely important to see the letters into the design process, the problems. Uh, and the, the methodology, and I think is, I feel very close to this kind of process of this kind of aesthetic heightening of performance logics and constraints. And I mean, you talk about it 100% function driven, yes, but there's always choices. Uh, and there's always multiple equifinal ways of which function could be addressed and which logics are priori prioritized. And I mean, this particular product, obviously, you have some an unusual. Uh, a driver nearly of a mono uh, criterion of performance, which is speed. I mean, there's a few aspects of speed and acceleration and, 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 and how it behaves in curvature and so on. So it's, that is unusual and a little different from architecture. But in terms of specific subsystems of architecture, that would be very, very close to where we're working uh, and the way you integrate engineering teams and, and but may orchestrate and make selections and then heighten into into phenological uh, pleasure piece. I mean, I really find powerful and I find the interior also fantastic. There's a lot of in, uh, innovations in that which are not we only feel it's different and strange, but I love when it becomes motivated. And, and, and revealed its, its deeper rationality. So I'm really, really deeply impressed and, and I find it wonderful. And I think, uh, uh, I think it's also reflecting on the purpose of these, let's call them to some extent, there's extreme luxury here. And we, we sometimes criticize when we work on villas or super yachts and things like this, but we need to recognize that uh, those people who pay for this in a, pay, in a way pay for research 
which has no other way of funding it before you start. And, and I think some of these principles, uh, for instance, of, the, of, of, of this no longer see this other kind of way of hugging the body with the, with the chassis and, re and offering space underneath which is filled with electronics and the articulation of these. Uh, I think that will, a lot of these things will generalize. The electronics, and there's always these pioneering efforts and that's why we, all, we, we also feel kind of free and, and endorse some of these um, you know, kind of as I said, luxury villas, luxury pro uh, furniture, which we, we have to sell for 160,000, 200,000 pounds, which seems absurd and crazy. But the, it, it is part of that uh, 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 generalizable research there, and I, 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 where I feel that um, uh, uh, maybe I'm, I'm not sure if you've reflected that, but what I reflect that in a place like this, and I find it uh, important to, to, to have to. to, to to see the, this logic, yeah. it's not only for the five people who can afford that. It's 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 pushing culture and intelligence and the integration of science and design to the next level. First of all, I want to thank you for your leadership lecture. I learned many things I didn't know. You do quite a job over there, and if I heard uh, well. Uh, you offer a 10% uh, discount for everybody in this room? <laughs> we, 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 can, we can discuss it, we can negotiate. If we consider that the car costs one million uh, point two, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> good saving. Um, and thank you for this beautiful uh, conference. I would like to ask you, um, in the recent years, Ferrari um, has represented uh, in, um, all over the world, thanks to some architectural works like uh, Ferrari World in Abu Dhabi. And uh, I would like uh, to ask you, when uh, the architect has to represent Ferrari, um, in, uh, what, in your opinion, uh, which are the, um, uh, the values that should be able to embody in architecture to be able to represent this value of uh, hand craft and uh, identity of Ferrari? Well, uh, let's, uh, let's say, first of all, innovation. This is the, the, the main principle. If you, if you have the chance to, to visit uh, the Maranello plant, it's, uh, it's a, com a combination of many buildings, very, very beautiful buildings designed by, I don't know, Renzo Piano, Fuxas, Jean Nouvel, and so on. Um, and everyone has a very strong personality, but above all because they are really uh, innovative. They, they are, for instance, the, the, the building where the, the design center is uh, located now is the, I don't know if you've ever seen it, it's a, it's a glass building uh, with, with very long uh, ov overhanging um, f uh, um, Piani, piani, come si dice? Floors, floors, thank, thanks to, to the, um, it's, a, it's a very peculiar structure, <coughs> high, like, with the same height with the one floor, and uh, thanks to that there are o overhangs of run about, I don't know, 30 meters, I think, uh, something really incredible, and uh, it's, it's beautiful, but, it, and it works. When, when you are on, on, on this floor, you, 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 you know that you are on the, nel vuoto, come si dice, on the, on the void, on the floating. It's, um, Maybe we can have one last So, innovation, for there. There are people waving on this side, and I'm sure there's some people waving on that side. <laughs> Yeah. I guess for the 
aerodynamical um, system that you studied. And I was wondering if the geometry itself uh, could be like dynamic in some parts and perform even better when you are like in a curve. So you are uh, working against an aerodynamic asymmetrical force. I think not. <laughs> we, 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 are, we are symmetric. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, we, we, uh, otherwise you don't have the balance. You don't get the balance. But I don't know. If you do something the not sim uh, asymmetric, uh, is, is because uh, you, it's, it's intentional, it's wanted, but it's not uh, functional. No, but I meant some dynamical parts which moves to perform even better but by then, jumping then some. Okay, there can be some devices uh, that move, move uh, uh, separately, maybe, depending on yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the situation. This, on the, this, this, yes. Then uh, uh, reconfigurable shape, uh, in, in, uh, not symmetrical, can be possible. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, the dream you're selling is get out of the house, get into the car. What we want to say is get out of the car and get into the building. So what I'm wondering is whether there is any research in, ter in the same scale that we're doing with interface of the cars coming into the building being done with you in terms of arrival and in terms of an interface between the car and the architecture you're getting into at the end. <laughs> We 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 reduce the production. The, the volume be, be, be now is lower. The volume of production is lower than seven thousand uh, units. Uh, also, also because this increases the, the residual value of uh, of our Ferrari. So I, I think we are not so dangerous in the end. <laughs> no, but we are reducing the the the, the emissions uh, drastically. If if you if you Look at the internet, you can find the uh, figures. Oh, but this specifically I'm asking, there's a lot of research at this school, and especially at DRL, about all the circulation patterns, cars arriving to the site, people arriving to the site. There's always about an interface of arrival to the building and what the sequence is going to be. You seem to work in a beautifully isolated production that has to adapt eventually to the built environment. And what I'm wondering, is there any sort of research on your part in terms of how you interface with the built environment or are you just adapting to the existing infrastructure in the same way people are doing here? <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's difficult to combine uh, a new new concept of mobility with uh, the, uh, the I mean the DNA of, the, the, of Ferrari. And Ferrari is a is a toy for for adults. It's a it's a pure pure pleasure. So uh, it's uh, it's difficult. To <laughs> Grazie.